So he parted the Red Sea, he made strike ground, he still does this today. So we're gonna look at this. We're gonna look at God parting the Red Sea for the Egyptians. So we're gonna read a bit of scripture here because uh, I wanna take you through this in the word of God so you can see this. So starting at Exodus 14, verse five, when the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, Pharaoh and his officials changed their minds about them and said, what have we done? We have let the Israelites go and have lost their services. So he had his chariot made ready and took his army with him. He took 600 of the best chariots, along with all the other chariots of Egypt, with officers over all of them. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, so that he pursued the Israelites. And so some, sometimes God is doing that. He's hardening the hearts of people, but it's, it's to show himself faithful. We're blessed. Amen. He, there's no harm coming upon us. God is faithful. God is just. So the Egyptians, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots, horsemen and troops pursued the Israelites and overtook them as they camped by the sea near Pi-Hirath, opposite Baal Zavon. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up and there were the Egyptians marching after them. And so now fear is going to creep in. Amen. They've been let go. But all of a sudden, you know, Pharaoh's heart's been hardened and now he's coming after them and they're terrified. This is what they say. They said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us out to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? And we can relate to what they're experiencing. They've gone through these trials. They've gone through these plagues. God has shown himself faithful. But now they're like, okay, you know, we've made it out, but it would have been better for us just to go back. And that is part of their mentality, their mindset in that moment. Oh, it just would have been better for us to just die in Egypt than to come out here. God has a plan for them. And God was so kind and gracious and merciful. He's like that with us today, where he knows it's difficult, but he also knows it's a journey. We're learning him. So he's gracious. We want to trust him. And now we want to trust him. So didn't we say to you in Egypt, verse 12, leave us alone. Let us, we're talking to Moses, let us serve the Egyptians. They didn't want to step out on in the sea. They wanted to stay back where they were. They, and the, and the, uh, we can relate there were times like, oh, I don't want to go through this trial. I just leave me here. I don't want to get that new job. I don't want to go through this warfare. I don't want to go through this. Just leave me here. Just let me stay here. Let me just stay sick. Uh, let me just stay in this position. It's real talk. Let me just stay where I am. I don't need to get that promotion. There's too much warfare, too much, too much jealousy, too many people persecuting me, too, too many people. I would just be better here with my, my small paycheck. God wants to take you higher, people. God, God wants to advance us, promote us. God wants to heal us, amen? But in the healing, there's instructions. And sometimes they're like, oh, I just want to, I want to lay at the pool of Bethesda. I don't want to get in. Uh, you know, I've, I've been sick for so long. No, God's saying, get in. You know, actually, he didn't have to get in. Let me think about that. Uh, he didn't even have to get in because Jesus came and healed him. But had he gotten in before, he would have already been healed. But he waited. He was complaining and he was in his feelings, feeling sorry for himself. So when Jesus came, he said, do you, do you want to be healed? You want to be healed? And so he healed him. And then he healed him. But we want to get the healing. We want to get the promotion. God wants to give it to us, but there are instructions. So many times healing comes with us. There is times when people just say, hey, he lay hands on you and it's done. But God may have instructed you to go to the healing line. Amen. And there's times you just pray for you also and it's, it's the healing. But there's other times when, yes, you're healed, but there's an instruction. Amen. There's an instruction. There's an instruction to bathe in the water seven times. There's an instruction to pick up your bed and walk. There's an instruction that we need to follow to do, to receive what God has for us. Amen. And they're saying, oh, we don't want to do that. We just want to stay. We want to stay where we're at. And we can relate to that, that feeling of oh, maybe it's just not worth it. It would have been better for us, this is what they're saying, the Egyptians, to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Because that's what they see at that moment. That's they're terrified. The Egyptians have come after them. But what is God going to do? Well, verse 13, we're going to see what Moses said to the people. Do not be afraid. He's a good leader. He's telling them, don't fear. He's encouraging them. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance of the Lord will bring you, will, the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today will never see again. It's prophesying to them. God's going to deliver you. This is done. We are well. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. My God. He's speaking to them. And we have the power of the Holy Spirit inside of us. So we can speak a word that God's giving to you to say, peace, be still. 
you are well, you're healed and whole. By my stripes, you're healed, daughter. And you speak forth the word of God. We don't have to wait for Moses to speak forth. We have the Holy Spirit inside of us. That doesn't mean God can't speak to you through a prophet, or apostle, or teacher, evangelist, pastor. He can, he does. He speaks to us through many things. But you don't have to wait until you get to the church house to get a word. God can give you a word now. God can give you a word for your situation. God can speak to you. So you're not waiting for the man of God, the woman of God to speak. Amen. Because God can speak to you and tell you, that's what I'm doing in this world. In this world for you, that's what I'm doing. Amen. Verse 15. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. I love this. You don't need to cry out. Move on. I've already done what I'm going to do. It's already done. Walk on and get the victory. Go forth. I've already done this for you. You asked me already. I've done this. So walk on, move on, and go pick up the victory. Go do what God, what I have said for you, says the Lord. Amen? So raise your staff, he says to them, and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. So he said, no, I've already done this. Part the sea. Come on now, move on. I love this. Because there's nothing wrong with crying out. You can't go wrong in that. God's son, okay, you don't need to cry out. Move on, move on. That's the word, move on. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, verse 17, so that they will go in after them. And I will gain glory through Pharaoh and all his army, through his chariots and his horsemen. Now, here's what we're saying that today. So many of us were crying out, crying out for God to, to heal us, for God to, let me move back here, for God to heal us, for God to do things. He's like, I've already done it. Go through. I've already done this. And we're waiting for God. We're waiting for God. We're complaining. We're saying, oh, it would have been a better... God's saying, no, I've already done what you asked me. I healed you when you asked me. I restored your marriage when you asked me. Now move on. Walk in that healing. Walk in that restored marriage. Walk in your healing power. Walk in what I've given you. I've already done that. So don't, you know, not even stop asking me because he didn't say, he said, why are you crying? He asked him, why are you doing that? Move on. He didn't say, you know, stop. He just said, why are you crying out? Tell those rights to move on. I've already done that. Move on. And man, I hear the Lord saying that some of us say, move on, I've already done that. Walk in it, walk in it. What do you say? Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the waters so that you can, what? Go through, walk through on dry ground. I did what I'm going to do, walk through. 